I mean, obviously, this is a desperate tragedy for the cinematographer, for the director, who I believe was also shot, and for Mr. Baldwin himself. Right. He'll probably never recover from this. Mm. Um, I have been in this situation myself in Hollywood. I, I've been the actor pulling the trigger. I, I've been the armorer. And I've been the stunt coordinator, right. so I, ha I have some experience of this sort of situation. Yes. Well, this and is why you're the perfect guest for this, Mike, because I thought you might know <laughs> a bit about this. Because, I mean, I'm well, very I... much, I mean, I've only once fired a gun in my entire life. It was on the firing range uh, up in the Bronx of the NYPD. Um, and it was quite a frightening experience, actually. Um, never did I expect such a small thing to have such a kick, you know. Um, so I don't really know the difference between whether you put a blank bullet in a, in, a, in a prop gun or whether there's nothing. Tell us, explain to us what the prop gun actually does normally. Well, we don't know if it, yeah, we don't know if it was a prop gun or a real gun. I mean, usually in films, you, you do use real guns, particularly in America. We don't use them so much in the UK. In the UK, in film and TV productions, it's sometimes only the hero who actually has a, a real gun and it's very carefully supervised. We've mm. got much tougher gun laws, but you get blank firers, um, and you get weapons that look like real guns, um, but don't do anything, but they function. Um, you have to have someone in charge. In the UK, there'd be a risk assessment. And when I was in Hollywood, um, we certainly had a risk assessment too. You'd have an, ar an armorer and you would have a stunt coordinator. Now, you may remember that case with Bruce Lee's son. I think it was in 1993, but early 1990s. Um, when he was shot on set mm. by a gun, and it was quite an extraordinary situation because they had had a real bullet head in the gun for some close-up shot, I believe, or something similar, and then somebody hadn't checked the gun, and it was then reloaded with a blank, and effectively the blank then provided the propellant for the bullet which was in the gun that shouldn't have been there mm. from the close-up mm. shot, and that, that killed him. Now, something similar could have happened in this case. I mean, if you are on set, and here this is an incident in New Mexico, the U.S. is awash with real guns at the moment. I mean, just if you look at the, the crime figures, I mean, they had 10,000 firearms homicides in a typical year. I think last year there was nearly double that number. And there have been millions of guns sold in the last few years because people are feeling insecure. Yeah. So there are lots of guns and lots of real ammunition, and it's not particularly restricted in the U.S. The guns are more restricted than the ammunition. Yes. So it's quite possible on set in the West for someone to have, for example, bullets in their pocket. Yeah. Um, but it, the circumstances of this, with the cinematographer being shot, suggests to me a shot to camera and that something has gone horribly wrong um, with that shot to camera. Um, but, of course, there are all sorts of an infinite number of um, other possibilities. Um, but in some productions, there would be protection for the, for the camera. There would be perspex screens. And another principle that you would always go by, and I've done this myself on set, is you would never fire the gun directly um, at another actor. Mm. You would fire to the side of the actor. And the only exception to that might be some specialist shot um, going into camera for whatever reason. But again, the, the facts will probably come out, Mike. Yes, I mean, like all of these terrible tragedies, there's usually a series of sort of errors that have happened or something didn't get done that was meant to get done and all of that. But is it the case, though, that you... So you can... From what I can understand you saying, correct me if I'm wrong, so you can have a real gun which can actually be loaded up either with real bullets or blanks or a mixture of the two? Um, well, you can certainly, in the States, in these Western films they will typically be using real guns um, and they will be using blanks. Mm. Now, blanks of themselves can be dangerous. I mean, blanks can be improperly loaded. Um, you know, things can get inside blanks. Yeah. Um, blanks themselves present a hazard. Um, but if something, for example, got stuck in the barrel of a gun, that could then become a projectile with the blank behind it. Yes. You then have, as well as that possibility, Mike, the fact that a real cartridge might get accidentally loaded into a gun that's being used on set. That's not impossible either. Mm. Um, so there, there, unfortunately, there are a lot of ways it can go wrong. And I always stress to people when I'm training them, you know, triple level safety. You know, you don't, you're not just dependent on one safety check, you know, multiple safety checks. And you've got to some, have somebody who's a professional and who's in charge. Now, this film was being made in New Mexico. And one question that comes to mind was, was this a union production? 
or were costs being cut? That's another possibility. I mean, did they have, you know, a, pro a professional arm or a professional stunt coordinator? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. All that sort of stuff. I mean, it is a hugely responsible job being being the armorer, of course. Yes. And mm -hmm. very rarely do things go wrong. We don't see many. I'm going to touch wood as I say this. We don't see many accidents in the UK. And I think that's because we use fewer real guns in dramatic productions. Um, but um, these incidents, nevertheless, are very, very rare, happily. Well, unfortunately, when I lived and worked in the US, you know, there would be so many stories of, you know, a child finding the father's gun and killing one of his siblings because they didn't realize that it was full of weapons and full of bullets and you know just really really incredible and also the thing about the american public is that every time there is a shooting incident or what is called a mass shooting incident the, the, the purchasing of guns actually goes up and whenever any politician starts talking about you know properly putting some more gun controls on the, 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 the purchasing goes up incredible it is extraordinary and i've been looking at these you know that situation recently and as I said, normally in the US, they have about 10,000 firearms homicides and something like 30,000 firearms deaths. Well, last year they had getting on for 20,000 mm. firearms homicides, whether or not that's a result of lockdown, I don't know, um, but it probably is. Yeah. Massive gun sales. There's something approaching 10 million Armalite type AR-15 rifles that have been semi-automatic rifles that have been sold to civilians in the US. I mean, guns are... You know, you have to have a criminal records check before you can buy one. That usually happens quite quickly. Ammunition is often very, very easy to acquire in the States. Oh, yeah. And roughly yeah. speaking, there's a gun for every person in America, but only about something under half the population own them. Um, but it is an extraordinary situation. Mm. And mm. America is a tinderbox at the moment because all those, you know, loads of people armed to the teeth. And of course, the country isn't politically very stable at the moment. No. Well, that's the there thing. are an awful lot of Trump supporters with guns. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Well, there are an awful lot of Democrats with guns as well, which is something which is sort of True. almost, sort of, you know, counterintuitive, really, if you think about it. But but I mean, I was it, always it depends, surprised. It, it depends where you are, of course, yeah. because, you know, in in the um, the Western states and the South, you've got Southern Democrats, which are a, a rather different thing to East Coast Democrats. Yeah. But generally, the, the National Rifle Association um, would tend towards the right. Yeah. And of course, it's a famous lobby with the um, the right to keep and bear arms in the US Constitution. Of course, they got it from us, by the way. Mm. It's in our Bill of Rights, but it was an, a right. It was something restricted to Protestants for the protection of the realm against Catholics. But the Americans then incorporated that as the Second Amendment um, in the US. And of course, um, it means that you can go out and buy a gun far more easily yeah. in the US than you can in the UK. And just to put those figures previously into comparison, US has something like 10,000 firearms homicides typically in a year, double that last year. We typically have about 50. Mm. And even if you correct for population, that which is the factor of six, that is a colossal difference. And it is because you know in the UK, guns are very tightly restricted and properly so, and I think it is a social benefit. And although people will argue otherwise, I think the r insane number of guns in private hands in the US, and often untrained hands, is a reason that they have problems. But that said, the problems are also usually associated with drugs. Mm. Most most mm. of the US drug uh, gun crime is associated with drugs, and not necessarily the people who are just you know, stocking no. up on armor. No, of course, and they may well be people who have guns that are held illegally, but I was always astonished that even, and it was only really after that Bowling for Columbine um, documentary that Michael Moore did that he managed to convince Walmart, which effectively was the Asda of America, where he used to be, I used to go to visit my sister and I'd go to the local Walmart, and there was the gun section. You know, now they don't sell guns anymore, but they still sell bullets, right? So I go in there, well, now I'll be going there hopefully at Christmas, um, just to see what they're selling. And they sell everything from, you know, short snub bullets to sort of practically dum-dum bullets. I mean, you can just buy anything you like. And then, you know, pick up some popcorn and some shampoo on the way out. Yeah, nine, nine millimeter, all more or less without restriction. Yeah. Do you know how many mass shootings there were in the US last year? I was absolutely amazed, 600. Mm. Well, they, of course, they that, call, they call it a shooting with more than four people. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, loads of people, but more than four. But I mean, I suppose the big problem here for this film uh, company now, aside from obviously the tragedy, is, is the insurance um, problem that they're now going to have. Uh, and maybe the whole business is going to get as a result of this. 
Yeah, I, I, it's going to be the financial implications in the States are, of course, colossal. Mm. And they're going to be going across, you know, they're going to be seeing every T was crossed and every I dotted. Was everything done properly on set? Were any costs cut? Um, you know, did who was in charge of and precisely of what? What were the risk, risk assessments done? These are things that they will go over in minute detail. And, you know, being America, um, you know, you would see typically multi-million dollar settlements, I would think. Mm. Um, but again, let's come back to Mr. Baldwin himself, as well as the tragic victims of this. I mean, he must be feeling absolutely terrible. Oh, yes. I mean, whatever may have gone wrong, um, it is a dreadful situation for him to be in. Yeah, I think, well, just, just generally dreadful as well. Mike, thanks very much indeed. Hope you're well. Uh, didn't get a chance to talk about your own situation, but we will, I'm sure, catch up on that next week. Mike Yardley, writer, broadcaster, expert on the gun culture of the United States of America as well, which has led to this terrible tragedy.